Hello there, hello there, hello there, hello there, and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga. I hope you're doing well wherever this podcast may find you. I hope you are doing swimmingly. I truly, truly do hope you're doing swimmingly. How am I? All good, all things considered. I cannot complain just got back from a workout feeling mighty fine feeling mighty strong feeling mighty hydrated feeling mighty lubricated moisturized drenched in sweat you know all that stuff that i love and choose for myself i'm feeling all those things today and i hope i hope in my heart that you're feeling the same way Today we have a jam-packed show for you today, loads of interesting topics to talk about on the number one cultural commentary podcast in the world, so wherever you may be today, grab yourself a little drink, grab yourself a little snack, sit back, relax, and let's get in to the number one cultural commentary show in the blood clot world. Welcome back to the Agassino Zynga Show. So today, 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 we have to talk about, we have to talk about the game that happened a few days ago between England v Slovakia I didn't want to talk about England too much don't really want to talk about the Euros too much because to be completely honest I'm not really that bothered about international football I don't really care haven't watched a single Copa America match I've watched the Euros here and there for the most part World Cup I followed pretty closely but for the most part if it's not club football I do not care but in this regard considering the level of talent that England had at their disposal Considering the good feeling around us and shit, I just assumed, I don't know why, I just assumed these guys were going to go out in the Euros and just ball out, have some fun, create some good moments, score some amazing goals and just get the country giddy again, right? Make Britain giddy again. But unfortunately, or fortunately, or as per usual, when it comes to England, there's no giddiness, there's no excitement, just pure dread and horror. And even though we beat Slovakia 2-1 in the end, got through to the quarterfinals, Way more questions and answers for us this tournament. Way more questions and answers. The first being, why? Why are we so horrible to watch? Why is the team selection never correct? Why is the squad selection never right? Why have we got such an imbalance of players? Why, why, why? And first thing that I think about is that when it comes to selection, we have this weird thing in this country in general where... We have this thing about picking the best players. Fair enough for the squad. But I think when it comes to the team, just picking the best players and forcing them into a starting eleven isn't the way to go. Obviously, for an international side, especially a calibre of country like England, you should be picking the best players in each of their positions across the country, right? Mostly, only, only obviously in the Premier League, but, you know, let's just say Premier League players, you're going to pick the best of the bunch. Cool. But I think when you're putting the actual starting 11 together, you have to pick players who complement maybe not each other, but the entire team. So maybe, maybe you might notice that even though Anthony Gordon isn't your best player, he might be the best player to start for England. Even though Ivan Tony isn't your best English player, he might be the best player to start in the English team, especially if you've got certain players playing in that team. I think that's the first thing we mess up on. We're so, you know, obsessed with picking the best players in their positions and forcing them to play with each other that we sometimes lose track of. Sometimes the team, the collective is more important than the individual. But then it just comes down to the pressure. The pressure that these guys are under and their inability to handle it might be the sole reason why we don't see these guys go out for England and have fun the same way that they have fun for their club teams. Most of these English players play with a smile, play with a swagger, play with a bravado, play with a confidence that they don't have playing for the international team. They never have it. Whether it's Foden, um, whether it's flipping Declan Rice, whoever you can name in that England team, when they're playing for England, they're not as confident, they're not as forthright, they're not as fearless. But whenever they put on their club jersey, you see that in them. So clearly there's something around the team, the pressure, the media scrutiny, the fans flip-flopping, whatever it may be, that kind of affects them, which is obviously bad, but kind of shows how weak mentally they probably are in general. 
Because I think other nations, especially in Europe, especially some of the major nations, get probably way more scrutiny, especially tactic tactically wise, from ex pros and pundits and shit, than they get here in England. In England, it's just like a you know unnecessary hype job. We probably do overhype these players. They're probably not as good as we think they are. But god damn, the inability to handle pressure is pretty startling, especially when you consider some of these players play for some of the best teams in the world, if not the country. Then. After that, then after that, specifically after the thing I hate the most about this team, the thing I hate the most about this team, the thing I hate the most about this team, they play such an unattractive, boring brand of football that inevitably sends you to sleep. But because we have individuals who can create individual moments of brilliance, we can sometimes get some things out of game. And the game against Slovakia was no doubt the same. We played terribly for 90 minutes. Ended up getting a last minute equaliser. Courtesy of Jude Bellingham's incredible overhead kick goal, right? Incredible clutch moment there from him. And he played pretty poorly as well. But to put that moment out, out of the bag, incredible. Then we get the winning goal from Harry Kane. Incredible too. Incredible scenes at the end. But apart from that, and maybe the substitute towards the end kind of changed the game. And Gav Southgate as well was, you know, just throwing anything at the wall and seeing what sticks. He probably brought on Ivan Tony a little bit too late for me personally. But still, he proved that he was a great addition to the squad and could offer something different if we need to swap out Harry Kane or if we need somebody else to play up front with him. It's the fact that we had to wait so long to see these players turn on against a team of the caliber, against a nation of the caliber of Slovakia, that's the most concerning for me. And I think for everybody that watches that game, that should be the most concerning part. Like, damn, we are that bad? Yeah, that's how bad we actually are. That's how bad we actually are, for real, for real, for real. And again, I'm not really looking forward to the later matches and guess off. I just hope this is a realization for the country overall that maybe we're not as good as we think we are. Maybe we're not that good. Maybe we are an average national team. We have a pretty decent, um, we have a pretty decent, you know, domestic league. But when it comes to international football, we are hopeless. We are absolutely hopeless. Whether it's the coaching, selection, player profiles, pressure, expectations, whatever it may be, we are absolutely terrible and horrible to watch. And I feel so bad for all the England supporters that give it their all to go and support the team and they drush out so much, so much horrendous performances. It's almost, it's almost unbelievable. It's almost unbelievable. But again, what can you do? <laughs> what can you do? Big up in the stream chat. Big up, Brendan. I see you. Well gone, Brendan. Thank you for being a TAS supporter, my friend. Thank you for joining the collective that is the TAS supporters. I appreciate you so much. Well gone, Brendan. Big up, big up, Brendan, for joining and being part of the TAS supporter group. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. And big up everybody else as well in the stream chat. I appreciate you too. Wild one for the wild one. Um, wild one, big up um, Yomi. Big up Yomi. Yomi says, I don't know, bro. I do think this year France and even Portugal, CR7 as great as the years has been, so pressure under pressure. They're still humans and playing for our country. No, that's true. And I think the pressure is not really the big thing. I think even England have seen or players across the country, players across Europe. There's probably a lot, there's probably too many games. I think we're seeing a lot of players who are clearly fatigued. I think a lot of these players could have done with a break this summer. They could have done with a, a good recharge, a bit of a gap. But they're expanding. All of the international competitions are basically being expanded. More teams are being added. More rounds, more stages. So these players are getting run into the ground. Literally, they're playing all year round with no breaks. So it's no surprise some of the games have been a bit lackluster. And some of the star performers haven't been at their top performance levels you know what i mean um, there's just too many games man too many flipping games for these players to play so i do kind of have a lot of sympathy for them when it comes to that regard i don't sympathy for them when it comes to that regard a little update a little update regarding the unfortunate incidents or maybe the fortunate incident for those of you out there who are horny for those of you who are horny for the zone for those of you who are horny for some adult entertainment, maybe one of the best videos to ever drop on social media in a long time that featured this Wandsworth prison officer who had gotten some, you know, getting down with some hanky panky with a cellmate. And, um, or not cellmate, with a prisoner, sorry. She works there as a prison guard and she decided to give the cheeks up to some prisoner in his celly, in his cell, in his cell with his celly, actually. Absolutely hilarious. Now, it's kind of, you know, given rise to a lot of reactions out there. But one particular reaction I wanted to focus on was this.
regarding somebody that I looked up to when I was younger, somebody that I was a big fan of and somebody that I've kind of grown to dislike the more and more I've heard him speak on podcasts and share his opinions on social media. And that is Mark from Mash Mashtown, right? Mashtown are one of the premier UK rap groups, even slash grime groups of all time. They're probably up there with Nasty Crew in terms of their influence, in terms of their impact, in terms of their notoriety, Le legendary crew from Asco to Tricky, to hypo rip like an incredibly well balanced incredible um collective of mcs and rappers who for me were the soundtracks of my youth when i was growing up especially in secondary school i loved mash town but ever since podcast mics ever since podcast studios marx has been sharing his unnecessary opinions with us and it's made me not like the guy yeah, he came across like a cool dude, right? He came across as somebody you might even want to emulate, somebody you might want to meet in real life. But the more he shares opinions online, the more I'm like, God, this guy's a little bit of a dork, isn't it? In his own way. In his own way, he's a little bit of a dork. He left this comment regarding the whole issue with this woman, um, you know, giving the cheeks up to a, to a prisoner in Wandsworth. He said the following, seeing Mandem say they wanted to go jail so they can have sex is hilarious. It must be tough out here. I'm not going to lie. I've not heard a single person on social media with any kind of relevance or any kind of quantity saying, oh my God, that video is so hot. I can't wait to go to prison. No one's saying that. Everyone's just commenting on the video itself. Maybe people are having a big debate around the guy kissing this woman, right? Whatever that may mean. But this Margs guy turning this into like, man, didn't want to go to prison to have sex. It's like, what? No one's saying that. And also, at your big age, this is what you're thinking about. These are the thoughts that are running through your head. That men didn't want to go jail because they might end up bumping into an OF chick who they can smash behind the cell door. Is that what you're thinking about? Really? Like, huh? Honestly, some of the worst things to happen to, to, to like, bad man, to gangsters, to road dudes was the invention of fucking microphones. Look at the Italian Mafia incredibly sullied and watered down through the invention of youtube and adsense and stuff sharing made up stories about their legacies and about their come up and whatever it may be look at you know gangsters and hood guys on the west coast on the east coast sharing again exaggerated really dumb opinions about how they grew up and what it was like growing up on the fucking streets allegedly and now you've got one of our premier uk rappers somebody that should be you know up there with the legends on Twitter sharing these nonsense opinions that nobody is sharing, trying to cause some trap of conversation and go viral. Like, yuck. Come on, Margs, man. You should know much better than that. You should know much better than that. But again, what do I know? What do I know? But there is a short update, a short update regarding this Wandsworth prison guard. And it's a bit of a sad one if you've got a heart. I don't have a heart and I don't care. And I like fucking, you know, I like chaos. So I don't really give a fuck about this. But if you've got a heart, you're going to feel bad. Allegedly, the inmate that was caught on camera having sex with a prison guard has a girlfriend at home. Who would have guessed it? A guy that's willing to have sex with a prison guard in prison might not be the bestest guy in the world. He might not be a gentleman. He might not be a catch. Who would have guessed it? Who would have guessed the guy that's smashing cheeks behind the cell door with his celly in the back smoking a joint adding commentary, zooming in on his piece and shit, might not be the bestest guy. Who would have guessed? I'm so surprised. I am legitimately surprised that this guy, number one, has a baby mother at home while he's doing this bird. And number two, was pictured or videoed doing this thing in full 480p. I'm so shocked. I really am shocked. But the caption courtesy of the Shade Bar says as follows. The seventh month pregnant girlfriend had to be hospitalized. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But <laughs> honestly, I'm sorry, but only deadbeats, right? Only piece of shit guys can do this to women and have absolutely zero conscious. Zero conscious. Have zero sense of guilt. They could legitimately put their baby mother through hell and high water. Make her go into a, what you call it, stress-induced fucking labor or something, right? Put her in an actual hospital and come out smiling. Be there during the fucking baby shower pictures with his Burberry shirt on and his Pradas. You know what I mean? Pointing to his baby mum. Do you know what I mean? Like, they have no fucking care. And women keep spreading their legs open for these 
busted dudes who do these type of things. Number one, who do, you know, crime bad enough that would make you go to prison for a long stretch. Allegedly, he robbed people's, you know, clothing and brands and jewelry and whatever it may be called. So, you know, not the bestest guy in the world. He ends up in prison. And then while he's doing his <laughs> <the> prison <laughs> A video of him goes viral where he's smashing his prison guard doggy style against the fucking door. Imagine her DMs. Imagine her comments. Imagine, imagine the people out there trolling her and shit. God almighty, bro. The seventh month pregnant girlfriend had to be hospitalized over the weekend due to stress. After constant updates and press about her partner, the inmate who got caught on camera with the prison guard. Honestly, her partner, beloved to be was it Linton, Linton Wellwatch, or Linton Weirick, 36, was jailed in April for, um, for after raiding a property in Kensington, West London in March 2022, he stole a litany of handbags, jewellery, laptops, which were kept inside a safe in a luxury flat, so he's basically a bit of a bum, right, doing any kind of robbery that involves like stealing people's possessions, you're a bit of a bum, you know, there's no, nothing else about it, I, even if you're, even if you're stealing like luxury items, this is kind of bummy. At like 36 years of age, to be doing house robberies is insane. You should be moving into like NFTs, crypto scamming, Forex, you know, whatever else, you know, running some OF fucking agency or something. But running into people's houses with a ballion at 36 years of age, robbing handbags and jewelry, and then getting caught, right? <laughs> is bummy behavior. But somehow, Somehow, if one thing bummy guys can always do, one thing bummy guys can always do is keep a baddie by the side of them. They blur this woman's face, but I'm assuming it's most likely this woman, the baby mother, is probably quite attractive. The woman that he was banging in prison is obviously quite attractive too. So what is it about these guys that are, you know, involved in such crime, that are such bums, are so able, so easily able to attract women in their life? Why do they seem to not be able to close their legs to these guys? Why go on for this? Because the one thing I give these guys credit for and something that I have to, you know, give them respect for is that they don't pretend to be something else. I've never met a bummy guy that, that pretends not to be bummy. They're pretty honest about who they are. They're pretty honest and consistent about who they are and what they're not going to do. So if you involve yourself with someone like that, you, if you let them sell you a dream, it's kind of on you. Because most likely, this isn't his first baby mother. Most unlikely, this isn't his first crime. This isn't his first running with the police. And the fact that he's got, he's doing so much time in prison for a home invasion, for a robbery, should raise all sorts of red flags if you're a woman. But these ladies like the high life. They like the soft life. They don't want to work and shit. This guy's doing robbery, selling the bits on fucking... What is he going to? Fucking cash converters to sell LB bags and then buy some things and take her to Nobu. They love it and shit. So it is what it is. So, you know, as much as I have sympathy for this lady, you know, you can kind of choose who you lay with. You lay with a guy that's a fucking criminal. He ends up doing some criminal stuff and then you end up being surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised in the slightest. Continuing on. I wanted to play this video because I felt like this video for me encapsulates why i think it's really irrelevant and really unnecessary for anybody to ask anyone for advice about anything especially when it comes to your career advice from people who've made it is somewhat pointless because there's a you know there's a survivor there's a survivor bias sometimes when you make it you don't really understand why you made it so you're better off spending the time that you would spend asking somebody, hey, how can I be like you? And just going your own path or trying to follow their path and how they made it, as opposed to asking questions. Because more than likely, they don't have any answers for you that are really going to open the doors or that are really going to illuminate things for you and make it clear as to what you should be doing. And one good example of this is this absolute waffle session, this absolute waste of advice from Pharrell Williams to this guy during Paris Fashion Week. This guy rocks up to him wanting to have some advice from Pharrell, wanting to have some sort of insight that might open up some neural pathways that might finally make him realize where he's going wrong in life. And for me, all I hear is pure, unadulterated waffle from Pharrell in this particular clip. Now, I could be wrong, but this is the main reason why I think it's almost unnecessary. 
almost offensive to ask anybody that's successful how they made it because they don't know themselves and sometimes they have the worst advice ever don't take it <laughs> do you know where you'd be 400 years ago what he said did you did he mean like floating in the ocean if you were a slave that fell off a boat or something is that what he meant 400 years of slavery what what honestly don't get emotional brother i'm hungry i'm trying to make it i've been releasing my shitty brand on instagram getting zero engagement no one's putting any orders through on my Shopify. I want to have a creative studio like you. I want to one day be a creative director, a fashion director. I want to one day make music videos. I want to one day work with some of the best artists in the world. How do I get like you? Don't be emotional. Brother, it's all emotional. I care about my work. I'm a creative. I have to be emotional. In order for me to create good work, I have to tap into the emotion. I have to tap into happiness, to hurt, disappointment, glee, you know, surprise heartbreak i have to tap into my emotion how can i not be emotional how can i not take it personally when i see somebody that clearly isn't as good as me making 10 times much more money than me how can i not take it personally when somebody that's just started yesterday is far ahead of me in their career when i'm much older than them how can i not take that seriously emotionally how can i not take that personally what the hell is he talking about what type of waffle advice is this and for me, the really annoying things about people like this, right, is that sometimes I guess they just lose sight of how they got there. Because maybe the best advice for someone like Pharrell to give somebody like that is just, hey, keep doing what you're doing. That's it. Just keep following something that you clearly enjoy. And maybe along the way, you could have the opportunity to take this hobby that you like and turn it into something that you do full time. Maybe that's the best advice. Maybe that's the best advice to give to a creative. Because nowadays, especially with Instagram, because I've noticed myself, ever since I've stopped using Instagram as often, I do sometimes check DMs and shit and go through some stuff, but I'm not on it as much. One thing I've noticed from not using Instagram as much is I don't have as much FOMO as I did in the past. I used to have tons of FOMO. Seeing people doing all these cool shit, seeing all these amazing events happening. And I'd be like, oh my God, I wish I was here. I wish I was there. I wish I was doing this. Bubbity, bubbity, but. But one thing I don't have anymore is FOMO. Another thing I don't have anymore is a lack of consistency of, or like procrastination in general. I feel like my procrastination has gone down a lot, but my output has kind of, you know, uh, improved somewhat. And that's because I'm spending less time watching people. Right? Comparison is a thief of all joy. But comparison also takes up your time. Comparison is a thief of fucking time. And one thing that you can't get back in life is the time. Time you can't get back. It's a non-renewable resource. So if I was Pharrell and this guy came up to me and asked me some questions, you know what I'm saying to him? Hey, brother, just keep plugging away. This thing that we do, this profession that we're in, usually is a calling. Usually you have this unrequented desire to be creative is something that sits at the pit of your stomach that you just can't let go every time that i'm outside somewhere or that i'm on the gym i'm at the gym i'm cycling wherever it may be and i hear a tune playing in my headphones i can't help but think of mix ideas i can't help but think of remixes sometimes i'll be walking down the street and i'll see a particular sound i'll be like oh shit that'll look incredible on the shirt i'll be thinking about something i'm walking down the street i'll see somebody talk about something oh shit that'll be a great podcast topic sometimes when you're creative you just can't help but think of these things and sometimes 
it's not necessary to overthink it. Just share whatever you're thinking about. Just share your inspirations. Share your work out there with the public. And nowadays, we have so many amazing platforms, social media platforms, whatever else, content platforms that you can share your interests, share your hobbies with people. And if it then gets to the point where people like it enough that they want to invest in you and you can then take it further and become full-time and do it professionally, amazing. But the fact that you can share it, number one, should be the main thing, in my personal opinion. Just sharing it should be the most important thing. It shouldn't matter anything else. Just the ability to share it should be the thing that should be at the front of your brain. But again, it can be difficult because you see other people making it professionally who've maybe made it a bit more early than you, blah, de, blah, blah, blah. Another thing that needs to be said as well is that sometimes these careers aren't for you. Sometimes you have to figure out what is for you in the process of trying to make something work for you that isn't for you. Sometimes you're going to waste a bunch of time, quote unquote, doing things and pursuing things that you probably shouldn't be doing, but you'll figure out along the way by just being open and plugging away. And sometimes the actual cruel, cruel nature of the beast is that sometimes for some people it might take them 16 months, two months to make it. For you, it might take you 10 years. And you still might not make it. So if that's the if that's the case, then the practical advice, which I've been um, saying and preaching about for the longest time, and I think it's something that a lot of people don't really take heed to, get a full time job. I think way more creatives need to actually get a real job, and almost ground themselves in reality, and then pursue their creative things that they want to do on the side. I think this idea that everybody is going to make it is insane because that isn't true and obviously isn't going to happen so i think some people should be happy with being able to do their hobbies their interests their passions on the side on the side that should be more than enough for most people to be able to express themselves on the side and maybe earn some extra bucks by reviewing collections by maybe showing off their artwork once or twice a year at a gallery that's more than fine but easing the pressure of your creative work and your artistry by having a full-time job is super important i remember when i was coming up and doing my thing in the whole dj scene for a little bit there was this girl that i used to play with again big up natalia she knows who she is and she had a very different point of view she always kind of pushed the idea that you should maybe save up a bunch of money and give yourself a runway of like six months and more so, so you work a, you work a dead-end job, you save a bunch of money, and then you give yourself six months to quote-unquote make it in your avenue or your profession, whether it's design, whether it's music, whatever it may be. And then every six months, if it doesn't work out, you get another job, you go again. I personally didn't like that because I felt like it put too much pressure on your creative endeavor and output. But in some respects, giving yourself that time limit, that time frame, can maybe be a good thing because it pushes you to try new things. I personally think most people should go out there and just get a regular job and pursue their creative output as just a hobby. And then if it pops off on the side as a hobby professionally, fair play. But this idea that everyone can make it is stupid. And the idea that you should take advice from Pharrell at his stage in his career where he has no perspective on how to make it nowadays and essentially he's kind of winning nowadays based on the work that he did like 20, 30 years ago, which is incredible. Don't get me wrong, but if you're really being you know if you're really trying to be nitpicky and shit it would be pretty clear to see that pharrell hyper focused and specified in one particular area that was music became one of the greatest producers in modern music history and then through being very good at doing one thing it opened the doors to many other things because he was a very good music producer suddenly he's become big in fashion big in streetwear big in jewelry big in accessories right big in design overall and a bit of a tastemaker radio presenter podcast producer all these sort of things are opened up because he hyper specified into one particular area became world class at it and then the doors opened if you're really going to be picky and i don't think i don't think at that stage advisors don't be emotional and play the part into it because i'd imagine a lot of those hit records he produced under neptunes a lot of those hit records he produced himself for his own self-titled albums and shit a lot of those were produced with some emotion a lot of those were a response to people maybe saying no you can't sing you can't do this you can't do that and him saying watch i'm going to prove you wrong so this idea that you shouldn't be emotional and not take it personally, it's like, bro, how can I not? This is my life's work. This is what I've always wanted to do since I was a baby. How can I not take it personally? 
absolutely terrible advice from one of the our premier creatives out there such as pharrell williams but again should you be surprised obviously not should you be surprised obviously not moving on moving on moving on from this particular <clears throat> topic i wanted to also talk about this this is something that i've noticed a lot now now that i've kind of switched my social media output and focus from instagram to twitter i've noticed this way more often people on social media posting screenshots of celebrities or notable people who've blocked them i think this is really redacted and really dumb and really lame really corny and just unnecessary if anything <clears throat> i think it's dumb in the first place because i'm somebody and this is this is kind of weird to say but i take a lot of pride in not letting people know how i feel about any of them like personally no one's ever gonna know unless you talk to me personally about certain things you never know how i feel about something so i've had tons of people on social media that i don't legitimately know block me on certain platforms because of an opinion i shared or maybe because it's just a cut of my jib fair enough but i'm never ever gonna let the, those people know that number one that i know or that i care especially through sharing a screenshot of them blocking me on a social media platform it's so ridiculous because what do you want do you want a prize do you want a cookie do you want a star do you want a medal because you've shown that somebody got annoyed or didn't like what you said and decided to block you out of their, out, you know, away from their social media feed. Like, what do you want from this? What are you trying to gain? Sympathy? You want them to maybe unblock you? I don't know. I'd imagine the rates of um, I'd imagine the rates of blocking to unblocking are probably quite low. Once you've been blocked by somebody, I'd imagine the likelihood of them unblocking you is probably nil to never happening. If that's the case just take it on the chin and keep it moving i understand why people do take it personally because it is a bit of a middle finger it is a bit of an f you to block somebody i personally have never blocked anybody in my entire life i think i take too much pride and too much yeah i just have too much pride and i don't want anybody to know that i'm pressed about anything so the last thing i'm gonna do is an outwardly expression of being pressed by blocking somebody it's never that deep for me i could always just turn off the internet I've, i'm of, i'm i'm definitely um agreeing with the tyler creator school of thinking cyberbullying doesn't exist if somebody's annoying on your social media just close the app turn off your phone go outside everything's okay so the idea that somebody is annoying me so much that i have to block them on my social media feed to kind of make my life worth living is insane i'm never going to do that you're never going to know you touched me that way ever in a million years and i'd rather just you know ignore when i see you on the timeline and just avert my eyes and just keep it going and just scroll past as opposed to going on your profile clicking the dots like it's just in, it's just way too much it just shows you're way too pressed if anything it's a very unmanly thing to do to be honest as well to have a guy like myself like going on people's profile and blocking them it feels very very unmanly it just feels very moist it feels just something that you shouldn't ever do as a man personally i would never agree with it but if you are going to do it cool and if you are going to be the person who maybe pokes and prods at people especially celebrities which i never understood as well i think it's all well and good sharing your opinions on your own platforms on your own channels but going out of your way to at a celebrity or to say a mean thing under their comments is really lame and then those same people that do that the same people that at celebrities right they at them they go on their comments and they say crazy shits then they get surprised when they get blocked the worst type of people the ones who do that sort of mess and then all of a sudden are surprised when they get blocked are the worst type of people i despise them what did you expect people are sensitive people are going to be sensitive on their social media some people have a little bit more of um they treat their social media space similar to how they treat their real life they don't you know they, you know, they don't want just anybody and any tom dick and harry to be fucking taking up space within their life so they'd rather take people out block them and tell them hey no more no mass then have people just storming they're saying whatever nonsense they want to say which i can kind of understand and sympathize with and sympathize with but personally there's no way in hell i'm letting anybody know i'm pressed enough to be posting screenshots of them blocking me absolutely never happening never happening in a million years and i think most of you need to get a grip and move on get a grip and please for the love of god move on but again what do i know 
absolutely nada. Moving on, we have to talk about the one and only Nicholas Rose. Nicholas Rose is back at it again, ladies and gentlemen. Nicholas Rose is back at it again. The guy that was responsible for, you know, a bunch of people probably getting fired at Griesmüller when it first opened during the pandemic. They had these like outdoor open air events happening at Griesmüller, now called River. I think at the time it was called River Sudust, but previously it was Griesmüller. Now it's called RSO Berlin. So it's gone through a bunch of name changes. But essentially, this raver, this guy, I think originally from America or maybe Canada, I'm not too sure. He moved to Europe, decided to become a bit of a fixture in club spaces and shit, and essentially decided to bill himself as the number one complainer and victim when it comes to nightlife and just make everything, 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 every bad uh, interaction he has on the dance floor into a reason to be a social justice warrior and make it seem like the entire industry is racist, homophobic and everything else in between. And obviously, along the way, he ruffled some feathers, made some people upset, made some people angry and annoyed. And if anything, he kind of illustrated why sometimes you have to be careful who you martyr. You have to be careful who you decide as a victim. Because I personally think this guy is full of shit. I personally think a lot of his stories, a lot of the things he talks about, he probably lies and exaggerates a lot of his stories and a lot of his accusations because he doesn't really provide much proof. But in general, I think he's a menace because it seems like the major thing that he wants to do is kind of shame, is kind of embarrass, is kind of counsel people instead of actually trying to better the environment that he's in. If he legitimately had gripes about how he's been treated in certain spaces, there's a great way to kind of go about it. But the way he goes about it now is horrible. So in his latest attempt to counsel people in the techno scene, He's now turned his ire, he's now turned his attention across the Erste Commune and specifically Maron and maybe somebody involved in the Amsterdam dance music scene. I don't really know specifically who it is because he took down the post, but essentially he's accusing people within the Amsterdam dance music nightlife scene and Erste Commune collective and Maron as well, who's part of that collective of being sexual predators and harassers and whatever else it may be. So listen to this very strapping big muscular black man talk about how he was sexually assaulted at a techno night and that how now this is this is the cause of why we should cancel all these label nights with probably zero to no proof as to what actually happened but listen to him and listen to what he says and see what you think and whether or not you believe him so i removed my so I removed my post because legally I have to pay attention to the fact that, uh, yeah, people will try to come for me in that way. So I'm not going to say shit right now, but let me tell you, if you saw that video, go ahead and ask who I was mentioning. Ask them personally, reach out to them, open up that conversation with your friends about this collective. Open up that conversation with your friends about this collective because I'm telling you it's not safe. I'm not mentioning the name right now, but if you saw the video that I just posted, it's in your best interest to ask everyone that you know about this very particular Amsterdam collective that starts with an E and ends with a C. Open up the conversation because too much abuse is happening and I'm so fucking sick of it. Hey yo, first of all, back up from the camera. Anybody that puts the camera that close to their face, I'm uncomfortable. And I'm not trying to be offensive or anything, but this guy is like the advertisement and the textbook example of mental illness. There's something not quite right up there. This guy's not quite all there. Things are not fucking sparking off where they should be. And here he is in clubs, taking uncopious amounts of drugs, drinking all this malarkey and creating all these fantasy situations in his head and all these ops and enemies. When clearly the thing that he needs is maybe a month or two of sobriety, some walks in the park, maybe some jogging and shit, maybe just a different environment and scenario overall just to kind of get him reacquainted. But I personally think this guy's not all there in the head. He might have some undiagnosed mental issues, like for real, for real, for real, for real. He's way too close to the camera, way, way too close to the camera. But I could be wrong. And it needs to end. It needs to be spoken about because it's not the only collective. 
And this is the post. So the post that says here, courtesy of Nicholas Rose, 1996. And again, he allegedly he was born in 1996. Bro, he looks like he's been through some shit. It says, anyway, Maron is a bully. He's a monster and an intimidator. For the first time, I saw him since he protected, what, protected his friend who abused me publicly. <laughs> Bro, beat him up, man. Maron is like 6'4". You're like 6'4 too. This guy's built like a coiled piece of wire. He's ripped to shit. He does ballet and shit. Beat him up, man, if he sexually assaulted you, bro. I got no sympathy for you, bro. Like, beat him up, man. Come on, man. Wild one for this. What is this shit? Did he assault you? If he did, weigh him in. You're a big black dude, man. Tuck him in. If he actually did something to you, tuck him in. Don't be crying on social media. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Get your boy. He victim shamed me personally in my DM. <laughs> Bro, you should... Anyway, like over. Publicly on IG. You want to know why I left Amsterdam? We don't care, by the way, Lucas Rose. We don't care why you left anywhere. This guy's getting run out of cities. Like, imagine being a black gay guy and even the gay collectives, even the gay community, even the black community within these scenes don't want you. They're not rallying around you. They're not championing you. They're not protecting you. None of these people are like, you know what? You're too much, man. You're too problematic. Like they're they they if if you if you get the black community and the gay community and the queer community all against you, the kink community, wherever it is, there's something wrong with you. Something is definitely wrong with you. Anyway, let's continue. Get your boy. He victim shamed me personally on my DM and publicly on my IG. You want to know why I left Amsterdam? Because the other owner of EC, Ursula Commune, Isabel, called the police on me. Yo, this guy is such a psycho that the owners of these club nights and these commotions are calling the feds on him. He's scaring them so much. They're like, yo, please get this guy away from this space. This guy is too, like, please, please take him away. Please, boys in blue, please take him away. Um, literally trying to get me deported. My truth is not being done. Sh no, my truth is not being done, sh is not done shared. Jesse's other friend, I guess Jesse's Maron, um, then bullied me yesterday asking why I didn't leave the, the venue since Jesus arrived. <laughs> Jesse, <laughs> that's a good question to ask though. So if you hear the um, um, building works outside, that's actually a good question to ask. If somebody did sexually abuse you, if you did get assaulted, if you did get embarrassed, if you did get victim shamed, whatever all these buzzwords are, and that person who was responsible for those things that happened to you that are very hurtful comes into the same space you're in, either you choose violence or you leave. But crying about them being the same space as you is idiotic. What do you want us to do? Either you fucking smash a glass over their head or you leave the space. What else do you want us to do? You're a man. That's a man. Like, what else do you want me to do? If it's a woman, it's a whole different conversation. But if it's man or man, you have to either decide to put your fucking fist up, get violent, you know, maybe a little bit of a jicking in the side of their neck, catch a fucking charge, but at least your abuser is now DEAD. Instead of crying and complaining on the internet. That's what I would do. Not advocating for violence, but again, if I did get actually abused and I see my abuse in the same space that I'm in, God forbid, God forgive me if I bust my nine. God forgive me if I bust my nine. I don't want to get locked up like Shine. That's actually what's going to happen. But now I'm going to be fucking writing paragraphs on black, you know, white text on black background on Instagram asking for sympathy. Nah, I'll just be asking you to go to donate to my GoFundMe to get me out because I'm locked up and shit. Come on, bro. What's this guy talking about? I didn't leave the venue since Jesse arrived. You know who you are and the truth will come out. Bloody hell, Nicholas Rose. Bloody hell. Always crying and complaining about something. Now my DMs are flooding with other horror stories from the collective. Oh, and I'm the dramatic one. Yes, you are, bro. Your name should be Nicholas D. Rose. That's what your name should be. D for fucking drama and dick. Your truth will always come out. Just open the conversation. God almighty, the conversation. I'm the victim. The number Just one victim. Just piggybacking on my last message. Yeah. 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 Let's go. When people start acting crazy and they start acting guilty. And <laughs> <laughs> Anytime someone like that talks about crazy, bro, have you seen yourself? Have you seen your stories? Have you seen how you talk? Have you seen how you communicate? Have you seen the things that you cry about on social media? You're talking about crazy. Go. 
God damn, Polk Kill Black. And they start saying, be quiet, be quiet. It's because there's truth. Within only. No, sometimes people can tell you be quiet because you're annoying. <laughs> because you just shut the fuck up. Not because you're a truth speaker. <laughs> because you're exposing things. Maybe you're just annoying. Shut the fuck up. 40 minutes, I already lost two friendships. Isn't that crazy? Within 40 minutes. In one, I, I just got off a train. <laughs> He's being him being surprised that he he's got no friends is fucking hilarious. Nicholas Rose being surprised that he's got no friends is sending me. I swear to God, this guy's lack of self awareness is on negative zero. Before I got on the train, I had two friends, and after I literally have two block people now. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Just by mentioning a single person's name, because they don't want to be any, having anything to do with that. And that's fine. And people say, Nicholas, your reputation. The shit's already been fucked up. Y'all already tried to ruin my reputation. I ain't got shit to lose. Reputation, that shit is only about how people view you. He's walking around the streets of Berlin, topless with a backpack on. Should've known what time it is, isn't it? No shape up. No shape up. Heavy bags under the eyes. Probably been up for 17 days. Screaming into his fucking headphone <laughs> mic. He's a psycho. I swear to God, the back of it, the you know his back, that's back of the fucking backpack must be covered in fucking sweat. Just ranting and raving in the middle of the afternoon, talking about Maron and Ursa Commune. Who? <laughs> like in the widest, in the widest scheme of the things, Nicholas Rose is a fucking psycho. <laughs> Reputation is about how people see you. That's not actually the truth. It's just how people view you. Okay. Y'all. If anyone's trying to make you feel bad about something because of your reputation, fuck them and fuck a reputation. The only thing you have in the dance music scene, especially in a niche, in a subculture like this, is reputation. Unfortunately. Especially if you're not a legit victim, especially if you're just like essentially trying to bully people into submission through misinterpret purposely misinterpreting or miscategorizing situations in the hopes of you maybe shaming people into submission to do the things that you want. You're not going to gain any friends. It's already hard enough as it is. To be a legitimate victim, a legitimate victim of sexual abuse, rape, and everything else in dance music scene and getting one to pay attention to you. It's probably worse if you're somebody that clearly is somewhat of an ambulance chaser, a fucking, you know, virtue signaler, whatever you are, whatever this thing is that he is, it's probably even worse. Especially when you're completely burning all your bridges within some of the most important cities in Europe concerning dance music. What do you expect people to kind of band around you when you're doing nothing to kind of help your situation? When you're going out of your way to needlessly and without any real evidence just throw accusations at our people? Allegedly, he put out a post about Maron and Ersta community that was a bit dicey and accused him of some things that I'm assuming he got told, hey, take that down or we're going to sue. And now he's still ranting and raving about it and he's surprised that people aren't coming to his defense. It's like, bruh, bruh. Don't you care more about the truth than a reputation? Oh, but in the techno scene, y'all are talking about community and being there for each other. But you don't want to talk about how some of y'all friends are actually abusing their privilege and their power and their platform. What privilege? What power, brother? They're just DJs. What privilege and power do some of these people have? Some of these people are legitimate drug addicts, legitimate nitties, legitimately. Some of these people are also bullied in high school. You can tell a lot of these DJs were bullied in high school, weren't really that popular, were never really cool. And now you get behind some decks and you fucking do the little fucking techno shuffle and everyone's fucking jacking you off. Why are you letting these people get to you? Why are you letting them fucking disturb your peace? Why are you letting them bully you? SA you? Great, like, really? And you're like a six foot plus athletic looking black dude. Bruv, tuck them in. Beat them up. Kick their asses. There's nothing I love to see more than outwardly gay guys beating people up at clubs and shit. And letting people know, hey, I might be a FA whatever. 
but I'm going to tuck you in. It's actually quite pleasurable and quite satisfying to see that on a dance floor because sometimes people get it confused because somebody's sexual orientation, it, they, they almost think that you can't fight. It's like, bro, I've grown up in a struggle. I've grown up in the hood trying to, you know, does it, like, like, what does it make any sense? So actually tuck these people in or just change scenes. Go somewhere else. Do something else. If it's toxic and really that fucking hurtful, that painful, go somewhere else. Go somewhere you're going to be appreciated. Leave the scene behind. It's not that deep. You're not really missing out on much. It's just nightclubs and people playing them behind DJs, behind fucking turntables. It's not that deep, really, in my opinion, anyway. A lot of people are asking about what really just happened, why I'm posting this, and I'll make it very, very short. I can sum it up in just a few sentences. He says in the caption, there's the truth. Now I'm done talking about this until further notice, which is obviously not true because as you can see, there's many more stories after this, right? Every time anyone, any, anytime somebody says not being rude, they're going to be rude. Anytime somebody saying I'm done talking, they ha they're definitely not done yet. They just started. It's always the opposite. But in this particular thing, he says, yes, there were witnesses this time. I bet you no witnesses come forward. No one's going to want to put their name next to this guy and endorse him support him back him publicly never he's so toxic he's so radioactive he's so problematic he's so fucking annoying and probably a pathological liar nobody's gonna be willing to say yeah i saw what happened to this guy no one why would they fuck that shit but let's see what he says i was sexually assaulted at brett last september by the owner of a party and she was connected to Friday. you let a woman sexually assault you in a nightclub in Amsterdam huh it, is this lady built like the woman from fucking Game of Thrones if not then what are you talking about on as well Jesse Maron not only privately victim shamed me he publicly victim shamed me I would too. You let a woman sexually assault you in a nightclub. You deserve to be victim shamed. I'm sorry. If this was a dude, fair enough. If he was bigger than you, fair enough. But you let a woman sexually assault you in a club and now you're crying about it on social media. You should have punched her in the face. That's actually the only time. And if you think about it, maybe only gay men have the ability to actually punch women in the face anyway and not get fucking chastised in public. But if there's ever a time a man can punch a woman square in her face is when she sexually assaults you in a nightclub. Because if the, if the tables are turned, if they if they if you sexually assault a woman, and they punch you in the face, I'll be completely justified. Oh my god, this building works. You should you should have punched this woman in the face. What is he complaining about? I'm not surprised Maron publicly shamed you. I would have victim shamed you too. Bullied and intimidated me, and I ran into him for the first time since my attack in person, and he then again for the third time bullied, intimidated me, cursed at me, and started the sentence off with, ha ha ha, so you think you can fucking block me? Really? Ha 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 ha. That's Jesse. That's Maron. Also, calling DJs by their first name and trying to espouse familiarity is so cringe. It's almost akin to like, you know when rapper baby mothers or like side pieces are like, calling their fucking rapper you know quavius you know oh quavius or whatever whatever fucking quavius name is and shit it's like bro we get it we get it you suck the guy's dick we get it this is so lame calling the dj by their real name oh my friend J he's not your friend if he laughed at you oh my god the banging if he laughed at you for fucking getting abused by somebody come on man oh and afterwards his other friend martin actually asked me oh so you're still here i thought you would have left by now since jesse arrived so there's a post here that shows a DM that he must have received from somebody on Instagram. And the DM says as follows. Oh my God, so real. This is why I stopped partying in Amsterdam. So many of my alleged quote unquote friends kept supporting people that literally bully people into using G... I need to close this window. This, is, this noise is too much. That fucking building work is doing my head in. The building work is absolutely doing my head in. Anyways. This person on social media said as follows to Nicholas Rose in support, in support of him trying to cancel Erste Commune. Oh my God, so real. This is why I stopped partying in Amsterdam. So many of my alleged quote unquote friends 
kept supporting people that literally bully people into using G and also spike people around them if they decline. And also all the hundreds of times I got groped on a dance floor. Bro, anybody that bullies you into using drugs isn't a bully, just a friend. You letting yourself get bullied into using a drug isn't something to be proud, isn't something to be like using as a victim card thing. You're just a weak person. How are you gonna let somebody bully you into using drugs? How old are you? Are you over the age of 17? If you're under the age of 17, shoot me in a nightclub in the first place. If you're over the age of 17, you're a fucking loser if you let somebody bully you into use, using drugs. Especially a drug such as, you know, with lethal consequences as fucking GHB. Like, what are you? Like, come on, man. Like, what is this? Complaint about. And also, a hundred times I got groped on the dance floor. If you got groped on the dance floor at this club, at this party, why do you keep going back? If they clearly don't want to look after your safety, if they don't have people there monitoring things and keeping an eye on things, you complain and they don't fucking respond well to it, just stop going. How many times do you have to go to a party and get groped and get assaulted and get violated before you stop going? So you want to be in a cool place with all the cool people. They do some fucked up shit. You complain about it, but then you keep going and you want us to care. Okay, cool. It continues. Um... And also the hundreds of times I got groped on the dance floor, told friends and even the people running the events about them and everyone was just told me that it was my own fault due to me looking slutty and acting slutty online. That's, you know, we don't know if that's even true. It's just people just talking for talking's sake. But if your friends are saying that to you, then obviously they're not your friends, clearly. I mean, you've, you, you've to take someone's complaint seriously after not so many times and them saying you were asking for it. I was literally asking you several times to stop and you continued. What do you mean? Some people just should stop going outside. I think some people should stop going outside. There is maybe a prevalence of people that have issues that they have to deal with behind closed doors. And the last thing they should be doing is being in nightclubs, personally for me. Because I don't understand going to a place, getting abused, and all these type of things, and then keep going back. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with people that keep going back to these type of places. Definitely something wrong. Let's continue. Another one. Never liked the guy. It always makes sense now. When they was in London for EC, I already didn't like the vibes from him. Absolutely did. Unless you... Again, <laughs> I've had some not-so-pleasant interactions with DJs, but they've been direct communication with them. And for the most part, I just stopped listening to their sets... I stop taking an interest in what they're doing and just stop talking about them or mentioning them in any way, shape or form. It's not that deep, really and truly. No love lost. There's many other DJs that I can follow and be fans of. There's one thing I'm not going to do is have somebody try and like, you know, big, big bro me or big time me, especially just because you play music. Like, I'm not that impressed. I don't give a fuck. It's not that impressive to be a DJ personally. I do it for fun and shit, but essentially it's one of the easiest things to do. Easiest, it's one of the easiest art forms to kind of get involved in, especially if you don't even know how to fucking make your own music. It's not even that big of a deal. But regardless, I never understood this idea that people have where DJs have to kind of be their friend or they have to like, the, like I don't know, maybe just go and see people for what they are good at they play good music, they have a style that you like and shit, support them if you want, it, it is what it is, but this whole thing about, oh, I didn't like their vibe from afar, is a bit weird, like, what did, what did they actually say to you, what did you hear from them directly, to make you believe that, because some people haven't had interactions with them, or maybe what, because they didn't give you a G-list spot or something, because I don't know, I'm not, I'm not really sure about some of these people, let's continue. Just one more thing, if you're actually, if there's one thing this guy likes to do is talk into a camera and complain, isn't it? You rarely hear him, you know, talk about himself and his art and his creativity and the things that he wants to put out in the world with such level of ferocity and confidence. It's always complaining about shit in the scene. If the scene is that toxic, really, and it's what he's saying is true and he's not a liar, leave. Go somewhere else. Go somewhere you're appreciated. Go somewhere you're respected. Don't keep crying and complaining about things that are clearly never going to change. Especially with you. you. He's not the best person to get behind, personally. Actually wondering about the validity of my experiences, i.e. Amsterdam people who are watching my story. Right now, there's actually like hundreds of people watching. <sighs> Look at those eyes, bro. Look at those eyes. Look at those eyes, bro. Look at those eyes. This nigga is fried. God damn it, man. 
have a glass of water or something go and walk in the park or something man get away from the scene it's not that deep put down the baggie chill my story from Amsterdam who had unfollowed me or left me for dead since I left the country or should I say since I was left me for dead <laughs> because he didn't get into a club you remember when he nearly got the entirety of the fucking River Sudus Gris Muller RSO collective employee base fired because someone dared to tell him to put on a mask during a COVID party COVID is rampant People are dying left and right. This is before we uncover the truth behind COVID and the, you know, the, 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 the real facts behind the mask and shit. Before, when we were all fucking scared and shit, but we were still trying to live our regular schmegular lives. They had this really interesting scene at the time in Berlin where there was loads of open air parties happening. People clearly trying to get back to some semblance of normality, trying to get back to doing the things that they enjoyed, trying to get out of the house and shit. Club spaces opening up and decided to push the boundaries, push the limits of how they can open. A club decides to do that, give you the space to party, have a good time. All you have to do is follow the rules and just keep your face mask on at, when you're on the dance floor. Maybe you can sneak a little you know, breather here and there to have a bump, have a drink, whatever. But for the most part, just keep your face mask on. This motherfucker took it off for a, a, a prolonged period of time. Security guard told him to put it back on and he turned it into an entire episode of Griesmüller and the Berlin techno scene being racist and homophobic and complained that they left him on the streets without his coat. And it's like, bro, like, what are you talking about, man? Like, literally, what are you talking about? Come on, man pushed out the country due to bullying, intimidation, not wanting to continue my time there. Um, just go ahead and ask the people yourself. Go ahead, text Jesse. Text the EC people. Text your friends who you're partying with every weekend and ask them, is this true? <laughs> See what they have to say. Look this guy's an agent of chaos. Sir. He's an agent of chaos. Part of me kind of likes him because I like chaos, because I like fuck shit, because I like psychos. I kind of like him because he's legitimately ruffling so many feathers within the berlin techno scene amsterdam techno scene more than likely he'll find his way to london and you'll fucking flip this whole place upside down right <laughs> you go to fold you'd be like fold too white fold so white like why are the resident why would the resident djs white what's all this shit about queer acceptance and shit when none of the people involved in the background of like keeping this club alive are queer or gay <laughs> He's gonna have a field day in London, man. He's gonna have a fucking field day. Look at their body language. Look into their eyes. You can see for those help. You can see. You can see. And for the ones that ignored me and left me for dead, for the ones that were up inside of my home every weekend partying with me, but that whole time you knew there was someone who had abused me, I see you, baby. And I know you're watching my story. <laughs> Nick is a complete jump scare. Yo, he's so clapped. Oh, my God. Ew, brother. Ew. <laughs> Brother, uh, what's that? What's that, brother? <laughs> what the fuck? Yo, Nicholas Rose, never do that again, brother. Please, brother, never do that again. Never, ever do that again. I swear to God, never, ever do that again. You, baby. And I know you're watching my story. Ew. Anyway, uh, another, another DM. Um, no one brings up their youngest Protege DJ, LOL, that went out during their first EC event who, get, who, who went, what? That went out during their first EC, their first big EC event, who they cared so little about that they directly put him in the street like a dog and didn't blink an eye talking to, what? What? Is this, because English is not their first language. What does this even mean? No one brings up their youngest Protege DJ. So somebody within us the community is known as a protege, protege, sorry, and is really young. That went out during their first event and got, honestly, man, the scene is full of some legitimate mentally ill people. I swear to God, it's almost worrying how 
quickly how to jump to social media where they should be in homes. Babe, Nicholas, I've heard, babe, Nicholas, I've heard is hella problematic and is a source of a lot of dramas. I've been told that he has a lot of trauma and victim mentality. And actually the people that I stayed with when I was within da, 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 had stories about him too. He's synonymous with a scene of drama and he's from multiple groups of different people. That's probably true. So what he's sharing, he's sharing evidence of people talking bad about him and it's actually quite accurate. I hate it that these things happen to a person like you. I'd also have some weird symptoms with Maron, situations with Maron. He acts just like he doesn't want to talk to people who enjoyed. Oh my God, the fucking entitlement. The fucking entitlement. What is wrong with these people? Why are people so obsessed with DJ trying to be there? Why are they so obsessed with people who are trying to be DJ friends with people? Or friends with DJ, sorry. What is this obsession with people in the scene trying to be friends with DJs? Is it just because they want to get on guest list? Is it like celebrity culture? What is this stuff? I also have some weird situation with Maron. He just acts like he doesn't want to talk with people who enjoyed his set. So what? Do you like his set or not? If you did it, you dance, keep it moving. He doesn't have to be your friend. He doesn't have to suck you off. Do you know how annoying it must be to be a professional DJ and be DJing sober and have drunk and high people coming up to you trying to give you their life story? No wonder they avoid people and just want to run away. Or just want to duck back it's back into the green room i get it enjoy their set dance along maybe give them some air kisses from the crowd and shit keep it moving you don't have to try and be their friend why because they play music because they might have free drugs because they might put you on a guest list get your own friends man god damn it i went to the last us community and he was walking in the club like he was the king he is the king. That's why you go to Usta Commune. You go there, you give him all these views on YouTube, you buy all these fucking releases and shit because he's the fucking king. He plays at Bergheim. He's very well known. He's well in demand. He's got loads of followers on social media. He clearly is one. Why are you trying to diminish my, my man's achievements? He can't walk around. Like, honestly, if I did what he did, if I was at the level that he was, of course I'm going to be walking around and let my fucking nuts hang. Why can't I let my nuts hang if I am fucking the guy? You're there because he's a guy and now you can play me acting like the guy. What do you want me to do? Be all meek. Be all fucking shy. Be all timid. Like, nah, man, I'm just, I'm, just trying to, I'm just trying to do my thing. You know how it is. Nah, let your nuts hang. Let your nuts hang, brother. Let your nuts hang. God damn, these people are so annoying. So it doesn't surprise me. Sorry, um... He was, sorry, let's go back again. I went to the last Easter Commune and he was walking in the club like he was the king or something and just not positive energy in the party. Like he's better or something. He is better than you, clearly, because you want to be his friend too. You clearly look at him, you, you put him on a pedestal and then you're surprised that he's acting the way he's acting. Duh, you created a monster and now you're surprised that he's fucking reactions. Stop fucking putting him on a pedestal then. Treat him like a regular guy and maybe he might chill out and not be such an egomaniac. Or maybe not. Maybe he's justified to being one because he's one of the rare people that's made it playing other people's music in clubs. It's not. It's hard to do. It's the most easy profession to get into but it's the hardest to make it because everyone does it well. I'm sure we all have friends. Probably five friends that are just as good as any professional DJ out there. There's so many, especially if you live in a metropolitan city. You fucking throw a stone outside your window and you're going to fucking hit 10 or 12 DJs outside. It is what it is. So maybe you should be a little bit confident. You should have a bit of an ego because you fucking made it. It's hard to do it. He did it. Being a black guy too. Fucking hell. Let him chill, man. Fuck this. Anyway. So it doesn't surprise me that he does these things. Hold on. You're trying to say that he might be abusive because he's confident. He might be, an ab he might be a, a sexual abuser. He might be a victim blamer just because he's confident. Just because he has belief in himself. The scene really does hate niggas, isn't it? So it doesn't surprise me that he does these things. Whenever you're back in Amsterdam and want to party, don't hesitate to text me. This is the worst. You don't need more friends to text. Like, I'll show these fuckers what having respect. What? I'll show these fuckers what I haven't respected. <laughs> what are you going to do? You're going to start smiling, dancing in front of them. What are you going to do? You guys are high-fiving Nicholas Rose the entire time you're fucking partying to show them like you guys are positive and good energy. Fucking tapped. It continues. Um, keep positive and do what you are. Do what and do what you are. You'll get your way. Maybe you'll take some time but it pays off no it doesn't pay off 
This guy's a psycho. This guy is regarded as a mental case. This guy needs some help. This isn't paying off. This is a bad strategy. A very bad strategy. No one believes him, even if his uh, accusations are true. Because he's so crazy, because he's so unhinged, because he's so re unrelenting with his desire to be a victim, people are refusing to believe him. And he might be actually telling the truth. But because he's such an unlikable, untrustworthy person, you just don't want to back him. You don't want to endorse him. You don't want to pay attention to him. If anything, you just think he's talking out of his ass, which might he might not be. He continues. Anyway, the last screenshot says here, do you know the truth about the ones who run as their community? Y'all need to look closer or your, in, what's that? Ends blog, a big, or your ends blong, a bigger problem. What does ends blong mean? Is that like a Dutch word? And yes, I am resharing my, my abuse from Naomi. You cannot use your platform, fame and connections to isolate, bully, intimidate anymore. Y'all are protecting rapists and abusers. Disgusting. Bro, I'm sorry, but no one called Naomi sexually abusing me. I will physically assault. I will beat the shit out of a Naomi before they, physic they fucking sexually assault me. As a man, I'm sorry. If it's a woman, it's a different case, different level of sensitivity, different level of care, different terms of attention, different, different levels, different. But if you're a man, there is no scenario in the world where you'd let a Naomi sexually abuse you, especially in the dark, unrecorded platform of a nightclub. Tuck that person in. Choke her and fucking unconscious if need be. But there's no way in hell I'm leaving that space without this lady leaving with some fucking bruises. Come on, bro. What the fuck are you... If there's, what, if there's any excuse... If there's any rationale, any reason why you should be exerting some level of violence to somebody, it's when they cross that line and try and sexually abuse you. But in this case, he'd rather run onto social media and cry about it. What a loser. And then the last one, yeah, that's basically it. You got you get the gist of it. You fucking get the gist of it. I personally, I don't know, man. I don't really know what this guy's end game is. I really don't know. I wish I knew what this guy's end game is. Um, maybe he is telling the truth with some of these accounts. But I don't know. He's just such an untrustworthy character. He's so annoying. Um, you know, he seems to have problems everywhere he goes. And again, not every time, not every place you go to and you have issues should be relegated to the point of view of like, oh my God, if everywhere you go, there seems to be a problem, it's definitely you. Maybe that's not always the case. But in this particular case, it's like, brother, how many situations do you need to get yourself in in these type of, how many similar situations you need to get yourself in before you start making some changes in the way that you approach nightlife in the way that maybe you you approach the club scene maybe there's something that you need to do to kind of change how people look at you how you're perceived and shit because clearly 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 something is going all right i don't know how i don't know why but clearly something is going around he needs to change it but he's not willing to i'm not too sure why that's the case I'm not too sure why he seems to be enjoying ruffling. Maybe it is a mental illness. Maybe he legitimately enjoys being a victim. Everything about it doesn't make sense. But this guy is clearly, again, he might not be that tall. He might be kind of short, but he's a muscular, like, ballet dancer guy who looks like he could look after himself. And he's allowing himself to get essayed by, like, women who run, like, club nights in Amsterdam who are usually out of their minds on care or G or H or whatever else. It's like, bruh, like, just tuck these people in. Why are you letting them fucking abuse you? What is going on here? Are you enjoying it slightly? Like, what is happening here? Why don't you just leave the scene and do something else? Why don't you go to do ballet? I'd imagine as well, because this guy's such a complainer, it wouldn't surprise me if he's got a rap sheet as long as he has in the dance music scene, the ballet scene too. Probably about representation and diversity and all that nonsense. This guy is a fucking menace, bro. But case in point, I don't even think he's probably telling the truth. He's probably telling a half-truth. Maybe something did happen at Ursula Community. But maybe he's leaving out the part that he played in it too. Maybe. Who fucking knows? Either way, bloody hell. Bloody hell. Bloody, 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 bloody hell. Continuing on. Continuing on. Continuing on. Talking about clubs. We have this update courtesy of R.A., concerning the one and only RSO Berlin. RSO Berlin has a festival happening soon called Water Wolf Festival and they revealed their first name for the event in 2024 of this year. And it features some names that I would like to see 
and it's during a date that I probably will be free, especially with it being a bit more in advance, so I have time to save up and shit. It looks pretty good. So this is courtesy of RA. It says, Berlin Club RSO has confirmed the first acts that are playing this year at the Water Wall Festival. Running from August 15th through the 19th, the event will spotlight local crews such as Gigan, Home Again, Plasma, Proximity, Rasta, Selected, Self Control, Tilt, Vasilica, We Are Not Alone. The action will run um, across four floors, three floors, sorry, including the open air Opan. And if you haven't seen the open air space at RSO, check Instagram. The videos are fucking sick of the little open air. It's like a platform, wooden platform. It's raised. Like, it's really fucking cool. It looks really fucking cool. So let's continue. A mix of DJs and acts will perform across the weekend, including Juliana Huxtable, Laser Gazer, Mad Miram, Detroit in Effect, Carmen Electro, Faith Fatale, Dabo, recent um, art of DJing subject, Ellen Anion as well. In addition to the music, there will also be panels, workshops, details to be announced, plus a record market in partnership with the vinyl market and objects manufacturing. So I'm really looking forward to this. This looks fucking fun. Um, I can't wait to check it out when it does actually happen sometime in August, as you see there. Let me actually see how much the tickets are. I'm curious to see how much the tickets are for this particular event. That will be the curious thing. I'm assuming, again, let's see, a Berlin festival that runs between the 15th to the 19th. How much would this particular be? This will probably put London to shame, I bet you, during the price, prices. And it will also show how spoiled Berliners are and how much they complain about nonsense because this event in London will probably be about £100. Let's see how much it is in Berlin for an event that goes that covers basically three days right oh wow no fucking way <laughs> honestly berliners i need you to shut the fuck up berliners i need you to shut the fuck up you've got most of your clubs most of your clubs even if the shitty ones at watergate are open from friday to sometimes sunday morning you can rave in your city basically for 30 euros and under in most big clubs most big clubs also have decent drink prices. So if you don't want to get hammered on the way there and drink one euro beers or 150 euro beers, you can drink reasonably in a nightclub for 50 euros. You can have 50 euros extra in your pocket and get a few drinks and even some cocktails with that money. And people are crying about prices. Bruh, you've never seen prices until you come to London. London prices are crazy. Fabric, fabric. I'm sure... There's not, I swear to God, right? I swear in my life, I bet you, there's not, a, there's not, the, this, this up and coming Friday, I bet you there's not a party at Fabric happening that's lasting from Friday to Saturday morning that is less than 28 euros. I bet you it's more. Just to go to one club for one club night where they're giving you here, allegedly, a festival pass Thursday till Monday for 28 euros. And these Berliners are complaining. I get it. It's different. The price of cost of living over there is different and shit. But these guys need some perspective, man. They complain about the nonsense things because in London, we don't even have a... I don't think we have a singular nightclub that's open from Friday to Sunday even. Not one. They have multiple. They have a regular bar like Paloma Bar that's open from Friday night all the way until Saturday morning at 8 in the morning and then does the same thing on a Saturday. Like a regular cocktail bar, small venue, like 300 capacity, 500 capacity, decent enough place, plays house music and shit, open that late. We don't even have big clubs open that late. Fold, the club that was billed as being a 24-hour club, isn't even open 24 hours. God almighty, man, they're so lucky over there. So they've got Festival Pass, first release already available for 28 euros. They've got Thursday day ticket available for 18 and i guess the rest of the day tickets are 18.50 and you've also got a vinyl market entry ticket for four euros but jesus man the price is so fucking good um so the venue lineup here you got people i recognize carmen electra i'm a big fan of i kind of discovered them on what um whore back in the day um ellen alien i love to see Eli Akule, i love to see as well who else is here that i like um julian the huxable i'd actually like to see her again i um, actually seen her once at Paloma Bar. That'd be good to see her again. Um, Kalula, I'd like to... Oh, well, Kolola, I don't really know who that is, so I'd love to see them. Laser Gaze, I'd like to see them. Who else we got here? Mad Miram. 
uh, part-time kid. A lot of, a lot of locals, isn't it? Perk, Face Fate Tower will be fucking great to go see. Special Wave Set, I'm not too sure what that means, but I'd love to go see that. Um, Sandwell District will be good to see live. Soon back to back to Tarnock would be good to see live. Um, Fallow Santana, I don't know who that is, but that'd be good to see live. Yeah, so most Yanamaste, so a lot of like local people, which I like to be completely honest, and a completely different lineup and list of people that you're not going to see in Bergheim. I think that helps to make RSO different and why people kind of like it as a venue. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I would be infused and happy to go check this out. RSO Water War event happening at Berlin on the 15th of August. I'm very curious to see what I want for that one. Let's actually see the promo video. I'm curious to see what the promo video sound sounds like. So let's play this audio and see what this is saying. I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see. I'm curious to see them when they do actually play. Um, big up Netwatcher. Netwatcher. You what, mate? You're mixing up Die with D Detroit Swindle. Did I? Did I say that? I'm not too sure. Did I say that? Detroit in effect and Sandor District. Yeah, two different people. I don't think I did. I mix, if I did, my bad. Um, but yeah, good good lineup of people to go check out there. Um, there's also gegging parties happening. Proximity happening as well. I'm, I'm, I know them. Uh, we are not alone, obviously, with Ellen Allian. So I'm curious to see. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I'm very curious to see because I haven't. I still haven't been to RSO. I've been meaning to go for a while, but I haven't checked it out in a fucking while, and I want to see Wagwan. So I would actually love to see what's happening at RSO. Let's have actually see what's actually happening on the other dates because I'm curious to see if there's a possibility to see some other people playing there as well because that might actually make my trip worthwhile because I'm planning to go to this Water War Festival. So obviously, you know, go Bergen and see what's happening there, but also to go see some other nights as they're occurring over there at fucking RSO. I'd be actually very, very, very excited to check that out myself if I do end up going there. So that would be fucking cool to go and see and check out. I'm not going to lie. Um, what else do we have here? Actually there. Do you have pictures of people actually? <laughs> it's RSO, but whatever it is. Oh, that's that's really cool. Look at look at her joint with a little flower on the top of it. That's a, rec I don't know what the record that's a record store in Berlin. I, I forgot the name. I've been there before. I forgot the name of this record store. Who's that playing? That is Dr. Rubenstein. Oh, long time no see her. See you all. I got that going. Here we go. Who's this person? Um, big up cannies.mp3. That was my second time at RSO and it was a vibe. Thanks for having me. Who is this big, big up X0, Zyro, for the invitation and warm welcome. Without any break, we continue straight away the weekend. Duh, 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 duh. So what this person have... <laughs> So she played at a place called Ultra Nova Berlin RSO. So yeah, I'm, I'm curious to check it out. I really want to go see this space. I haven't been. I've heard good things about it. It's an alternative to Bergheim. It mixes things up. It's a little bit out of the way in terms of all the cool hit places in the central place to go to. It's a bit, you know, southern and shit. Some people, or some people with the tent up to go there. And I don't think it's near any other popular clubs also. So it's a little bit of a destination. So that's why people tend to not go. But I'm gonna actually check it out and see what I want. 
Let's see this post. Who's this person? Um, isn't that Caribou? Or my, or my, yeah, that's Caribou, isn't it? If Dan knew I could have failed math so many times, he wouldn't have been so proud of me. He played a six set Sunday. It was lovely to see him DJ and chat with him for the bit. Oh, big up Caribou. Well, I'll go on to Caribou. That's Caribou there, isn't it? Caribou performed there recently. What else do we have here? We have another open. This is the open air venue. Look, look how nice it looks, actually. Look how nice it looks. Look how nice it looks. Uh, big up Carlo G. Cool. I'll put the volume up slightly. How is that? How is that? How is that? Hope that's good. Hope that's good. That looks nice, doesn't it? of a ton of white people in various attire in various states of fucking decay open air venue nice clear blue skies like, look look nice weather out there as well nice backdrop industrial dilapidated graffiti laden place looks like a bomb site but that's part of the charm that's part of the charm of raving in a city like berlin so i'm curious to go see obviously more pictures of it on the outside more people dancing and swaying and shit having a fucking good time. I can't wait to go check out RSO. I'm really curious to see what the vibe is saying out there. But it looks like a looks like a vibe. It looks like a fucking vibe. Who's this person here? Um this is someone called VP Allowed. Thursday night was great to gather significant and consistent representation of Berlin trance scene, um, which is a still a small niche in the city, but made up of people fueled by true passion. Thanks again for all the artists involved and all the dancers who attended and stayed till the end. And for my closing set in this third episode of Helix Berlin. So big up these guys, Helix, a trance collective, a trance collective in Berlin, which is nice to see. It's a bit of a change because everything over there is techno. So any genre that isn't techno is being pushed out there. I'm a big fan of. So big up those guys. Even if I don't listen to trance, I'm going to advocate for them in the, in the in general. This is obviously the queue outside of the venue that everyone complains about because it takes long to get in, allegedly. Um, what else do we have here? We have more images of people DJing. Loads of support and shit. Oh, look at this. We have this image of fucking... Freddie K and his friends and his fans. I need to do a deep dive on these type of pictures. I don't understand. Like, what is this all this shit about? Are these people people that work at his label? People that are part of his collective? Are they all hangers on? Are they friends? Why are they all white? Like, I want to know something about Freddie Freddie K's crew because people love taking that picture of him after sets, like standing around and holding him up like he's some deity or something. It's very very weird. But again, maybe I'm just being a hater. Maybe because I'm not involved, I'm fucking complaining from the outside looking in. I don't know. But I find it bizarre that they're holding up this grown-ass man after he DJ set and making it seem like guy fucking invented water or something. It's like, hmm, interesting. But anyway, RSO soon come. Let's just see what the listings are saying in August. Wagwan for the August listings happening very, very soon. Wagwan Uche in the chat. What's good? What's good? What's good? What's good? Let's actually see Wagwan with fucking August because if this event is happening in August, maybe I should check out some other events happening in RSO during August. What do we have here around the same time Waterwall Festival is happening? We have a not much actually. Waterwall is only thing happening. Oh, there's a techno there's a techno mate event happening. Raw. This is a London club night actually. They're hosting an event in Berlin. That's sick for them, isn't it? That's a good look. That's one of the premier club nights we have here in London doing an event, obviously, in Berlin. So that's good. Well done to them. In August, what else do they have here? They have a Geist event happening. I don't know who these people are. Teenage Dream. That's, uh, isn't that DJ Heartstrings and all those type of people, I'm assuming, right? This is, again, more trancey vibes, I'm assuming. Lineup TBA, but I think that's who the, that Teenage Dream Collective is. 
But in general, curious to see Wagwan. I will be there, obviously. Waterwall Festival looks fucking fun. August 15th to 19th. Check it out if you're that way inclined. You know where to find it. Don't be lame. Synod vibes happening as well. People seem to like Synod, even though um, I hear complaints. They seem to be getting booked in places all the time. People keep queuing up over there. So clearly they're doing something well. So Waterwall, Synod, Technomate, all that shit happening at RSO. Check it out if you care. Check it out if you care. And if you don't care, it's okay. If you don't care, it's perfectly okay too. If you don't care, it's perfectly okay too. Okay, my friends. That has been the Agatino Zynga Show. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company as per usual. If you've enjoyed this show, you like what you've seen, make sure you smash the like button down below. For those of you watching the live stream, Random Show is following up in the next 20 minutes. I need to prepare, get the tabs open. Random Show in the next 20 minutes, so hold on tight. If you're watching this, watching this, listening to this via the podcast applications, make sure you leave me a five-star review on all the major podcast streaming platforms that you use apple Podcasts, spotify anything else in between leave me a review let people know how much you enjoy the show links all my socials can be found down below and all that malarkey and today for my tune of the day for my tune of the day to end this particular episode of the excellent zinger show i'm going to be playing one of my favorite albums of the year one of my favorite albums of the year by a group called candy a band called candy the album is called Inside of You, and one of my favorite tracks here, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite tracks from this band called Candy, it's track number three, no, track number two, actually, Short Circuit, featuring Aaron Melanick, who is the ex-guitarist of Integrity, this is one of my favorite songs, it's called Short Circuit by Candy, album is called Inside You, check it out if you're not that way inclined. And I'll see you guys again very, very soon. Take care, people. Peace.